Hello, my name is Carrie Oderman with UATV. Today we're talking about a film called Yakiv, which is still being shot in Ukraine. It tells the story about Yakiv Drobut, who saved the lives of 3,000 people during the Holodomor in 1932 to 1933. This brave man opposed the Holodomor policy pursued by Soviet authorities. Joining us in the studio to talk more about the film is Victoria Trofmenko, director and screenwriter. Now, this film is being created, and you prefer to call it a project. And it's about someone that was able to save 3,000 lives by making sure that they were fed. Uh, it's not about I prefer to call it a... Hi, first of all, yeah. Uh, it's not about I prefer to call it as a project. Film is not done yet. And uh, so this is, it calls project before film is shot. Uh, yes, because we are now in a stage of fundraising. Okay. Uh, this is why it's project yet. Uh, we've got a teaser short, but uh, not movie yet. And so we are uh, looking for money in uh, Ukrainian state agency. Uh, we have been refused a couple of times, about three, already third time. We had refused, we have been refused from uh, being supported and but uh, Ukrainian cultural fund supported us and we did teaser of this movie and uh, it calls uh, Yakiv about uh, man uh, he was a real man it's a real story uh, he really has saved 2800 people uh, during Holodomor and um, the point is that he was uh, first half head of the village he was communist and uh, he was uh, then he uh, he he was a head of a collective farm. It was a very hard uh, period for this village because uh, as he was a communist, nobody wanted them come in Ukraine. Really, in this particular village also, he was a very controversial person. He wasn't like just good man. Oh, he wasn't just bad man. He was just a human. He was human, so it's relatable. Exactly, yes. So he was like, uh, and he was both as all of us. Sometimes we act in a good way, sometimes in a bad way. It depends on the condition where we are. And with, it's more a story of a people who are in a particular condition of history, in a particular period of history, and how they act. And uh, he has uh, pushed people towards this sculptive farm he has cre created. And then when it came too far, he was able to stop. And this is what is interesting about the story and this person. He was able to change his priorities from ideology toward human being, what is more important in his life, which is to me very interesting because I think there is no more, anything more valuable than a human life. And the particular uh, uh, communist regime, they didn't care about human life. They just uh, didn't get human in account really, was like more important the idea. And it's, this is what is interesting to me, when the person change, when your uh, mm, main points change, I mean, uh, your mentality, how it works, how uh, is this is about psychology and uh, um, that is interesting to me. Moreover, this village, um, it was very special to me because um, the, during that period, there were more heads of villages, uh, uh, um, such collective farms, or head of villages, uh, who were trying to save people a similar way. But there always was someone who betrayed them. And who wrote that he is uh, uh, saving people, which was like opposite to the uh, politic of a, a communist regime. So they were or imp uh, sent to Siberia or killed straight away. So that was my question. It was, is this story about him being a hero or is it about the village also protecting him a little it bit? It was both. It was both and it, it, is, it, is, it was interesting because they were collaborating. At the very beginning, they were not happy with all what, what he has done. A lot of people were not happy. Somebody was aware. Happy. Of course, it's like uh, was split as society as everywhere. Somebody supports uh, uh, some political uh, uh, strengths, yeah. Uh, s somebody doesn't. But uh, uh, still, when it came to the danger, they were able to uh, unite, which is very strong uh, side of Ukrainians. And I think that we, what we have to study from the history, we should study to survive. 
rather than to become a hero who, who dies, which is very uh, for so far in all of the world. That's the subject. It's very, uh, uh, very good for the politic to make uh, a value for um, uh, being a hero to die. Because it's make, like you became a, a, a part in that machine. But it's more important to learn from, and it's like a more male position. I'm female director, and I'm much more interesting into the world of, of surviving. And I think it's more important. We have to uh, prolong our um, uh, our genes. We have to survive. We have to live. It's more important rather than dying a heroes to me. And it's more important to, as a for Mars uh, when. Uh, 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 people are able to, to leave. That's interesting, because as, from the female perspective, you're saying the men go off to war, the men fight, the men maybe will do something based on principle, but the women are the ones making sure people survive. They yeah. are... And I think this is being a hero, to, to, to stay alive, because this way you, you prolong your, li your, your uh, nation, being alive, I mean, uh, um, well, that's a, that is a different point of view, and uh, I think this is what it will be interesting to look uh, towards. Because I mean, there are, we have a lot of uh, male movies about war and and uh, how great to die, being brave, etc. It's the same about being brave, but being clever. It's about being clever and survive, no matter what. No matter your enemies, you have to unite towards survive. Then you'll sort out all your questions later. Survive. It's the, it's the main uh, idea for me. I think this is what we should learn from the history. And, uh, and in this uh, particular uh, story, it's important subject to me when they were very split from the beginning. He was tortured people, they hated each other. But when it comes to the total danger, when it comes to the total hell, he was able to change his position, and all the people also, they decided what is more important. And to me, it's important. This story sounds a little bit, are there comparisons when you talk about perhaps Oscar Schindler's story, saving thousands of people? Have these comparisons been made in the past? In some point, it is because it's a real story, both Schindler's story and this story also. And uh, uh, yeah, it's always there, uh, there uh, when it comes about um, such stories of a great surviving of a lot of peoples, uh, it comes about uh, people who were in power. Because when you're not in power, you're not able to save such big amount of people. But you had a very clever to, uh, to trick out the Soviet uh, machine to war. I mean, it's like they created like small, uh, this village became like a uh, 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 separate uh, uh, country, I mean, in a country. I mean, they created it, they, they uh, united, and we, which is great. And it's, it's our strong side of Ukrainians, because we can, uh, I, I think that uh, we, can, we can still organize when it comes in the face of danger, but it's very important. Uh, also, we have uh, weak sides or uh, as, as strong sides, but this particular side is a strong point to me. So how did you discover this character? It's a real person that did exist. The story is out there. How did you come to know this story and say, we need to make a film about this and about both sides of being human, you know, to be good and bad? Uh, well, I'm a film director, so I'm really interested in the strong stories. And uh, uh, I'm interested in the strong dramaturgy. I'm a writer, a script writer. And um, of course, from a amount of stories, uh, I was looking towards such kind of a story, which is about, I didn't want to talk about Holodomor as a victim, because we know that point of view, and we really were victims. But still, uh, if uh, we were, uh, there were people who were able to survive. Or we wouldn't stay alive now because uh, really it was uh, artificial starvation and uh, it was different from all the other regions of starvation as in um, Kazakhstan for uh, instance or uh, Caucasian uh, lands because they, were, they had uh, also um, uh, a lot of bread grows, well, um, how do you grain. Call it? grain grows, yeah, and so it was the regions which were um, under the pressure, but uh, n n not in Kazakhstan, not in in uh, Caucasus, uh, Caucasus or uh, parts of Europe, or some Russia. Uh, they did not had uh, uh, closed borders to leave that country. 
because in Ukraine they were not able to leave. leave. Uh, with, so, so I mean, of, obviously it was it was like a, we were victims. But uh, I was looking for what the strong side of, of, of that uh, in this situation. Uh, I was looking towards the people who who did who made a make who made able us to live and um, who, who helped others. And uh, I have Googled, Googled a lot of stories I read about it. And they find that uh, there were lists uh, of uh, people who, who were helping other peoples. But as I said before, they were di it was this, uh, this particular village and this particular person. They were different from others, uh, highlighted to me because uh, nobody betrayed him. Which is very different to a, a, a lot of, of the others pressure regions. that people were under. Also, you that know, must be other yeah. people's uh, is, uh, regions also there was pressure, but there was always somebody like a weak sheep uh, who uh, did it because they were also scared because it was it was uh, under the regime, etc. But um, uh, that uh, and everywhere there are such people. Uh, it's being human, being under the pressure, being scared, etc. But uh, I was looking towards the strong side, and this story was about that. How hard was the research though? Because the Holodomor, although it's recognized by many nations as a genocide, isn't known universally throughout the world that this happened in Ukraine. It's very familiar to Ukrainians, but only until the early 90s were people talking about it again. Was the research difficult or did you find that people were willing to talk to you about it? Mm, it, was, it wasn't easy. I was in the village where Yaki was living and there were not many people left. I read a lot of uh, books on that subject and also uh, on our days, uh, day by day, uh, these days, I'm going to meet with, um, he didn't ha has, uh, like he had a son who, who had cha they changed him name uh, to did not be in, um, Mm. Not to be persecuted, probably by yeah, the persecuted, Soviets. Exactly, okay. yeah. And uh, so, uh, so, uh, but uh, also there was a, a child of his uh, wife from the uh, previous marriage, and she's still alive, and we're gonna meet. And but uh, before, I read plenty of books on the subject. I, I met with people, and also in that village, and talked with the people who remember something about the Holodomor. It's not a, a, a familiar subject, in particular, with the script. I was in a script lab in. Uh, it, it calls Equinox in Germany, and there were uh, script uh, writers and dramaturgists from all around the world, and they read your script, and they say what they think about, what's the strong points, what should be changed, etc. And they didn't know about the subject. And they, and they said it's very important uh, to be uh, shown and to talk because it's a very strong story. And what is more important, they say it will be very interesting everywhere in the world because the subject is so important. I mean, even if you don't think about its historical yeah, uh, period, it's really still actual for now, uh, even now, and how to uh, resist uh, the regime which wants you to do what you do, but being uh, strong inside of uh, like the society and how to, uh, to keep uh, uh, w what is important for you. And, uh, still, it's, uh, it's not known, but it's, 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 there is a big interest towards that. Is your target audience Ukraine? Will the film be in English, Ukrainian? How do you plan on promoting it? Well, it will be in Ukrainian, of course, but we will do uh, English subtitles. I'm not sure. Uh, well, in one point, I was thinking about um, uh, maybe to do it in English as they did with the list, but still, it will be, uh, I'm uh, not sure it makes sense because, why, well, if Schindler couldn't uh, shoot, uh, when. Um, Schindler, a list of the Schindler couldn't been uh, shot in, in German, even so Steven Spielberg wanted, uh, in, in Polish, sorry, even so Steven Spielberg wanted to shoot in Polish, but then it, like, it's hard to control actors. I can control them in Ukrainian, it's a native language. So I think it's more important for me to, to keep the reality and uh, we will do uh, pro, uh, English subtitles uh, and I think it will work as all, all the foreign uh, films works and as it does on a VOD platforms, it's not a big problem for now, so far people watch it. And uh, I think it will not be a problem. Well, it's an important subject and we're really glad you could come and talk to us today. Thank you Thank very you so much. much. Thank you so much. That was Victoria Trof Trofimenko, director and screenwriter. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more with UATV. Yay!